Suzanne, forget that low cur. Could I have got the point of my sword at his throat sooner? I had choked him before he hurt you so. He was no worse than the others. Others? You mean this has happened before? Yes, and will again. Even if they say nothing, it's in their eyes, their voices. Oh, Tom, my dear, go away. Forget what has happened. Go back to your own country and be a great soldier. I shall hear of you sometimes, perhaps, and I shall be so proud, remembering that once you asked me to be your wife. You don't know what you're saying. My life is here with you. You can't just crush the joy of existence for what may be a fad. A few lies from a drunken lout. Lies or truth, it's nothing to me. People clack as much as they like. Why need we listen? Suzanne, I care nothing for this soldier's life. We'll go from here, you and I. We'll seek out a home for ourselves. I know the place. I saw it last spring when we sailed across the shores of Lake Erie. We'll build ourselves a nest there above the clatter of the world. You and I, Suzanne. Suzanne. Governor Simcoe informs Lieutenant Talbot he is to proceed to Philadelphia in the morning. Elizabeth Simcoe joins them and suggests they select dancing partners for the ball. If Miss Suzanne will honor me, Suzanne, I implore Indeed, you. Indeed, I shall be enchanted, sir. One does not walk with the governor every day. Well, Mr. Talbot, aren't you going to ask me to dance? Having lost his one true love, Talbot vows to carry out the dream of Governor Simcoe. He will forge a new civilization in the wilderness of Upper Canada. I entered the military on the wave of family tradition before I was old enough to know better. This morning, I have resigned my commission in His Majesty's Army. In a few months, I shall be a free man. I am going to realize my heart's deepest wish. I am going to take up a grant of land on my beloved Lake Erie. For years, I have dreamed of that. I was promised a grant of land wherever I chose and I know the exact spot I want. Wave on wave of dancing, shimmering water, curved like an Indian bow around promontories dark with clustering pines. I'm going to be a true Canadian and live as a pioneer should on the products of my own land. The food one eats, the clothes one wears, and all of one's own sowing and reaping. George. Yes, sir. One of these tubs is leaking. Tub, sir? Oh, no, sir. How did I find this one out in the middle of the yard? You see, I thought it was going to rain, so I put it there to catch some rainwater. And then it didn't rain, and the sun came out. Well, next time you catch rainwater, do it in the shade. Yes, sir. George, bring on the food. God, I'm so hungry I could eat an ox. The provisions are running a little short. I can take it from here. Oh, that's all right. We'll finish after dinner. You know, George... Yes, sir? I don't think we're in danger of running short of provisions. We'll be back to salt pork for a bit, though there's not much of that either. That troop of Indians that slept in the kitchen last week took half the barrel with them. I don't trust those heathen varmints. Oh, well, they meant no harm. They usually pay for what they take, eventually. I just don't trust them. Oh, I shouldn't like to lock the door against them. They're friendly enough, and they'd be bad enemies to make. Who'd have thought that today we'd be sitting opposite one another in this beautiful wilderness, at a table built by our own hands, in a house built by our own hands, drinking coffee made from dried peas and toasted bread? Ah. Good coffee, too, George. You're a genius at it. I wonder what my English friends would say if they could see me now, milking cows, baking bread, coming in from the woods as 
black as any chimney sweep. Talbot is visited by his surveyor, Malin Burwell. They discuss the extension of the Talbot Trail to promote settlement. Within minutes, a group of settlers arrives from Pennsylvania with the promise of more to come. Exalted, Talbot proposes a toast. It is said that once or twice in every man's lifetime there comes to him a magic moment when he looks into the mirror of the future. I think that one of those moments has come to me. I know that today history is being made. Today, for a magic moment, we have touched the garments of posterity. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Talbot Settlement. Colonel Talbot! Colonel Talbot, please, I want to see the Colonel! Wait your turn. Colonel All Talbot. right, wait your turn, Colonel, please. Please, please. Wait your turn. Colonel Talbot! Colonel Talbot. Colonel Talbot. Colonel Talbot. Colonel Talbot. Lot 1, Concession 2, 50 acres. Lot 10, Section 5, Dunwich. Alderboro, Lot 11, Section 3. Malahide, Lot 8, Section 2. Alderboro, Dunwich, Yarmouth, Malahide, Southwood, Yarmouth, Dunwich, Southwood, Yarmouth, Dunwich, Dunwich. Over the next 20 years, Colonel Talbot works tirelessly to settle southwestern Ontario. As demand for land grows, so does his power. It's a wonder to me the government allows a man like that to be in charge of settlements. Nice place to come. Not allowed to see the land you're getting. No title deed to say it's yours. Here you are, Mr. Hatch, Lot 33, Second Concession, Township of Malahide. The soil is good? Drainage? Pasture? This is Canada, where you're given a parcel of land and told to go and live on it. It'll be the first time a white man's hand has ever tilled that soil. We can't guarantee the conditions will be perfect. I've heard there's some get better chances than others. You'll hear a great deal that's not true. Some begin to question Talbot's authority, often violently. Colonel, there's no reason on earth why I shouldn't have that lot, and you know it. Reason enough that I don't wish to give it to you. Come. I mean to have it, and you might as well give in. If you, you don't... You threaten me, and I'll have the dogs on you. You can't bully me, young man. All right, I warned you. You... Well, do I get the lot? Talbot's control is threatened as a spirit of reform sweeps over the area. On St. George's Day, 1832, he calls a public meeting to head off rebellion and anarchy. If I could be sure I'm not putting a stick into a wasp's nest. I've never paid much attention to politics. Until these reform scoundrels came along with their seditious rubbish. If I knew they'd listen to me tonight. Colonel, this is the first time I've heard you doubt something you've set out to do. I don't like it. Strange how lonely one feels at a time like this. I'd like to have some old friends at my elbow tonight. One familiar face from the past. Someone to stand by and say, Good luck, Tom. Bah! What a sentimental mood I've gotten myself into. Talbot's wish is granted when his one-time love pays him a visit. Even now, I believe I'm dreaming. You, under this roof, after all these years. You've been lonely, haven't you, Tom? Was there no lovely lady who could share your castle with you? Let's not dwell on sad things. You're here, it's St. George's Day, and I'm to make my maiden speech. We'll celebrate, Suzanne. Talbot arrives at the King's Arm Hotel in St. Thomas. Over 2,000 of his settlers are waiting. When I undertook the formation of this settlement, I had hoped that I would have none other than sound British subjects for my settlers. In spite of all my efforts, some black sheep have gotten into my flock. I wish to separate the tares from the wheat the sheep from the goats, the true Briton from the rebel who would lay waste and desolate to your happy homes. I ask all those who are in favor of the king and constitution 
to hold up their right hands. A good speech, Colonel. I think it was a good speech, Jeffrey. Perhaps, if I'm very good from now on, there'll be a shiny crown waiting for me, too. Good night. <laughs>